who knows which fork was the right one, the tongue or the silver one. Hi, I'm Rebecca and this is Rapacious Reads. Today I'm going to be talking about Skin Like Mine by Gary Gottfriedson. So let's start off with a brief history lesson. There were people living in North America before Europeans came and settled it. Um, Europeans proceeded to make treaties with these individual nations and subsequently broke these treaties, which is a UN violation that nobody seems to care about. Um, a couple hundred years went by and the Europeans were annoyed to find that the uh, indigenous people living here were still here. They hadn't managed to kill them all. So they decided to implement uh, something known as residential schools where they um, took children from their families and put them into white boarding schools um, which were physically and sexually abusive. Uh, the Canadian government, I believe, performed nutritional experiments on children in these schools and they were also used as like work farms. So, shitty. Um, what ended up happening was all these abused children went back to the reserves and became parents um, and abused their own children and it's become a cycle of abuse in Canada and we really don't know what to do about it because um, the initial response of people is to take children out of their abusive homes on a reserve and put them in white foster care. But then you're continuing to um, not expose them to their culture. So we're kind of at an impasse. Um, anyway, Skin Like Mine is a book of poetry um, by Gary Gottfriedson. And he is from the Sequapemic Nation, which is located in British Columbia. I believe it's fairly inland because he's talking a lot about ranching and riding horses and there's not much ocean imagery. It's divided into four sections, which are uh, Skin Like Mine, Sculps and Derma, Tender Terminology, and Wolf Eyes. And these poems, um, or these sections, sort of zoom in closer and closer uh, to Gary's like personal life. Um, and they also become um, more and more positive. So Skin Like Mine um, is the angriest section and it sort of takes a, a world view um, on indigenous people and what they experience. So there's a poem talking about his experience in Puerto Alta where he acts like a white man. Um, and he's ashamed that, that he would do that. Um, and then I think there's also mention of um, African nations in this first section. Then in Sculps and Derma, um, I believe it has a whole Canada view and it sort of takes a look at um, Canada's treatment of indigenous nations and people. Um, this is, um, it could be considered angry, but I feel like it's more a bitter section. Um, so he's talking about $5 treaties. He's talking about how you can't trust your government, how you, you, you can't rely on them, which is not what most Canadians experience. And it's important to listen to these indigenous voices on this. This section has my favorite poem, which is One Tribe Canada. And it's a very rhythmic poem. You, you can like hear a drum beat in it. It's, it's, um, it's intense and it's, painful and it's hard to read and that beat is what keeps you reading the poem so one tribe canada like sounds like oh positive one tribe no it's about how all these in individual nations and like proud cultures are forced to become one thing and how they sell out their culture um as like lakota medical products and how um they try to pass off as white and how is painful okay and then the third section is tender terminology and this is the section that I probably understood the least of I think it's um at the sequipemic level so it's his entire culture but it's still a fairly angry section 
So I don't, I, I, I just don't have a, a feel for this section. And this is the section that made me put it at four stars just because I couldn't quite figure out what he was getting at. And then the fourth section is wolf eyes. And this one um, features a lot of sex. And I would say love, but I think it's more important that um, it talks about sex. It's talking about horses mating. It's talking about um, his own love story. And that's important because it's about renewal and a life cycle and, and furthering on. In this section, he is addressing many of his poems to Horse Child, which is saying that there's hope, that he's passing on this knowledge to the next generation and that maybe there is a healing way forward. Um, so I really liked the first poem in this section. However, I feel guilty liking it because it's a love poem. And after reading the entire book of poetry before this and hearing all the anger and how, um, how indigenous people are treated by white people in Canada, I feel guilty like reading this and liking it in any way. Um, so I'm just gonna read the first section to you so you can get a feel for his poetry. Um, I am here waiting, watching your breath, fog rolling over prairie, reaching mountainsides full of promise. The crackle of your breathing ignites my arched spine, speaks of body heat to take off the chill and then dampen my moss scented skin as your roving tongue licks the salt from my neck, from my belly. Gary is um, in his 60s, so he is experienced with language. And I love the way he uses adjectives. He, he says that a TD interact inspiration, my moss scented skin. Um, it's so visceral the way he writes. I think it's important to note that the four sections um, are numbered four. So four is the number of cardinal directions, it's the number of seasons in a year, and it's considered a static and solid number. So Gary is, is putting his poem in nature and he's grounding it, which, which is important. Um, so as a, as a sequipanic man, a lot of his um, imagery is nature imagery, and um, that goes throughout the poems. So I want to talk about the poem Bones, which goes against all of the other imagery in the book, which is so amazing. So um, he talks about how the land is just bones piled on top of bones. It's bison bones and eagle bones and human bones with this bone skyscraper topping it all. And it doesn't fit because normally when we talk about the land, we, we talk about the land as mother, we talk about renewal, we talk about um, old things dying and new things growing, but nothing is changing because of the way um, settlers have treated the land and the way that it grows. Um, another line from this book that, uh, that oh, it hurts is, um, I scope corporate skulls out of control, stuffing my mother full of defilement. Just, ow. My second, second favorite poem in the collection is Aggression. And it's a poem I didn't like can I say I didn't like something and it's my favorite? Yeah, I'm saying that. <laughs> um, so it's about a woman who acts like a man. She um, drinks like a man, she gets in fights like a man, she walks bow-legged through funerals and people stare at her. And the last line in the poem is, she's all man, but then some women hate themselves enough to hate men. And I think this is victim blaming. So as I said at the beginning of the, this, um, this video, indigenous women are more likely to be abused. And a way to deal with abuse is to put on armor to protect yourself. And being feminine is dangerous. So that's all I have for Gary Gottfriedson's Skin Like Mine. I'm not indigenous, so feel free to put any corrections in the comments. I understand and am open to criticism. So uh, I'll see you next week.